So today we're going to talk about how to do wheelie control. Uh, today's example, I'm going to use a Davis VPS for our height detection, for our wheelie detection. Uh, you could also use just a basic laser ride height sensor, uh, such as the Race Pack one. Uh, I believe a few other Holly dealers sell a different version of it as well. So with that, let's get right into it. So the wheelie control is mostly handled in the advanced tables. We'll start by setting up the input we're going to use. In this case, the Davis VPS pitch input. Just like any other normal input, it's a five volt input. We're gonna name it VPS pitch. Set it up for five volt as the type. And then we're gonna configure it. It's gonna be a custom five volt. I put the units as degrees. I put the format as 1.2. And what the format means is that you'll have one decimal place in this. What you'll, if you look at it, when you select the drop down, you'll see that we have one, two, three, four here, and it's just the number of decimal places. One is no decimal places, one, two, three, four is three decimal places. I think one decimal place is plenty of precision for this, so that's what I use. And then the Davis VPS by default is set for minus 12 to plus 12 degrees, so that's the scaling I use for my sensor min and max. After that, we just scroll down and we set the table up as such. So zero volts equals minus 12, five volts equals plus 12. And then we just interpolate between the two, make it linear. You can right click, fill row values to do that. And our sensor set up. The wiring side, I'm not gonna cover in this. That's up to you to figure out for your car where you wanna pin it. After that, we just go to our advanced tables and set things up. In this table, what we do is we just set up a timing offset versus VPS pitch, which is what we named our pitch channel from the VPS sensor. From there, we enter in a timing retard amount based on the pitch. Now I went negative three to 12 for my pitch degrees, just because, well, two reasons. One, we never need a negative number, but to make it nice, even numbers in the table, it needs to be divisible by 15. So minus three to 12 is 15, so that gives us one degree increments. That's why I did the table this way. Um, you could go and cut it in half, make it seven and a half or something like that if you really wanted to, but I didn't see the need. So what we do then, uh, for example, in this table, every car is different. You'll need to tune this table for your vehicle. So I cannot stress that enough. Don't just plug these numbers in and expect it to work perfect. But for example, what we've done is at two degrees, we start pulling timing. So two degrees, it's at zero, but as soon as we go to 2.1, it starts pulling timing. Then at three degrees of pitch, we are pulling two degrees of ignition timing out. And that's just the tickle it at first to see if it'll set back down. And then if it does not, by four degrees of pitch, we pull six degrees of ignition timing. By five degrees of pitch, we pull 13 degrees. And by six degrees of pitch, we pull 20 degrees of timing. Now pay attention to that five and six there on the pitch because we actually start rev limiting at five degrees of pitch and we actually just keep pulling timing by six to help give it a little extra nudge and try not to roll into the limiter too hard. Um, I'll circle back to that when we get to the rev limit offsets. That is the 1D table way where you're only looking at the VPS pitch. You could also do this table as a 2D table where pitch is set up exactly the same on the x-axis, but now we also have a y-axis we can use. Uh, I typically don't do it this way. I know some people that love using the 2D table and swear by it. Uh, I just haven't used it much, so I'm not super familiar. I can't speak to it too much, but I know others have, and they say it works. Uh, in this case, for example, what we would do is use either speed, rear shock travel, some other parameter as a scalable way to change the severity of the timing retard. Uh, so in this case, what I did, I set this table just up as a mock over speed. And you can see at the lower speeds, we actually allow a little more pitch before we get super aggressive with timing. And the faster we go, the, the more timing we hit it with immediately to try to keep it down. Uh, and my logic there for this example is just the faster you're going, the worse it is to get air under the car. You definitely want the car to stay down the faster you're going. 
So now that we've covered the various ways to do timing retards, I'll now show you the rev limit offset. So the rev limit offsets are something new with version six of Holly EFI software. It's not available in Terminator X. So this part is only for Holly EFI version six and newer. So what we do is we basically are going to take your rev limit and lower it based on a parameter. Uh, in this case, the parameter is pitch from the VPS sensor. So what this table is doing is when the pitch gets too high, we start activating our rev limiter to try to just set the engine back down. We're killing power is the point. So the way that works is by setting up your main rev limit and then setting up this table to be based on RPM and an offset to that rev limit. Effectively, we're just turning the rev limit on at whatever RPM this is. I'll show you a table at the end here on how I get to all of this. Uh, I'm gonna gloss over the how this works for the moment and cover that at the end of the video. So in this table, what we're going to do is we're gonna start by dropping cylinders at five degrees. So this rolls in and at five degrees it hits and it activates the rev limit. If you have it set to a soft type rev limiter, again, I'll cover this in detail at the end of the video, but if it's set at soft, this will be your least aggressive rev limit. And then as we roll in to higher and higher, up to eight degrees of pitch, it will become a more aggressive rev limiter. Um, and that would be the most aggressive in this case at eight degrees, uh, just because of how we have the rev limit set up. Now you'll be able to adjust this yourself. Again, end of the video, I'll show you how this all works. So the first thing to do when you're setting up your rev limit offsets is set your main rev limiter. In this case, I strongly recommend you use the soft rev limiter. It's going to give you varying degrees of power reduction using the rev limiter, much like timing. Uh, your low and your high is kind of equivalent to pulling no timing versus pulling all timing. And so that's why I use it, because it allows me to have not just my timing as a dial to turn, but also my rev limit as a dial to turn. It's not just on or off. I like to put a 400 RPM spread in it for no other reason than it's easy math. In this case, I have 8,600 and 8,200. Uh, from there, what I do is I just punch this all into a spreadsheet, which I will link in the description of this video so that you guys can download it and use it yourself. And this is that spreadsheet. The only thing you need to do with it is put in your low and your high rev limit. From there, it gives you the Y axis to use in the table, and then it gives you the low and the high offset. So when I go back to my advanced table, you can see that all I did was copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. And then what I'll do is I'll paste here. I will right fill, fill row values. Do that again here because I missed it. And then I will also go ahead and I will blend here and fill row values. Now what this, what this blend here did was it set up my variable limiting. So because I put this low one here and the high over here, so this is my least aggressive cut at five degrees and my most aggressive cut at eight degrees. And it stays the most aggressive above that if it keeps going because you don't want to put power back in. And then what I did is interpolate between there so that each cell, because I did four cells across, I go from lowest to highest. So each degree gives a more aggressive cut. Now you'll notice the table started with these over here, you know, zeroed out. And that's strictly because at 3000 RPM, if this thing is still straight wheeling, uh, we did something wrong and it's not gonna save it. And I think the odds of a false trigger down here are much, much higher than needing it. So I've just zeroed this out to prevent something happening at idle or something else. You know, you unhook it or something else goes wrong. Uh, basically, this is just me creating a fail safe mode. So that is Holly EFI version six wheelie control. Uh, if you have any questions, if I missed something, 
if you want help setting this up with your tune, uh, anything at all, just either drop me a comment or shoot me an email at highperfconsulting.com. Uh, other than that, have a great night. If you like what you see, do the like, subscribe, YouTube, blah, blah, blah stuff. Anyway, have a good night. Bye.